Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by today. We are going to make a, a brag book. And the paper that I'm using, the paper line is um, Kaiser Crafts Bundle of Joy. I'm using both the, um, the boy version and the girl version. Sorry about that glare. Um, but it's really pretty paper. It's really soft and it's really pretty. Um, so I've already made a few, but some of them... Whoop, there went the paper, hit the floor. <laughs> Some of them um, have a little bit more embellishments than the others. Um, they're not all finished. For example, here's one that's just a polka dot. And then it's got these really pretty little um, brads that look like studs and this nice little ribbon. Um, but these are really simple. And inside of here are just like sheet protectors and they hold four by six photos. So. It's really easy, so let's get started on it. Oh, let me show you some of the details in some of them. These are, they look like little buttons. Isn't that pretty? And this is um, My Road. Um, well, it's not fabric tape, but it's um, it's got sticky back on it already. Um, and then this is seam binding that I, I used. Um, I got it wet and scrunched it. it made it kind of scrunchy. Um, let's see what else. Oh, this one is a Tim Holtz. Um, little hitch poach, hitch poach, <laughs> hitch post, and um, it's not the elastic band's not really staying on it because it's not full of photos. But um, I thought it was super cute. I don't know if I'll do that on the other ones, but I thought it was cute. And then this one is simple. It's just got the My Road um, sticky back lace. Let me see if I can find it. Whoop! My Road vintage lace tape. That's what it's called. <laughs> Um, this is not my road. This is just some um, uh, lace that I had that I, I ran a piece of double-sided adhesive a tape on there and stuck it and wrapped it around all the way around the cover. Uh, I showed you that one. This one doesn't even have anything inside of it, but it's really simple. Oh, and these are uh, we are memory keepers. Um, oh, eyelet thingies. Are they eyelids? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, and this, this one's some more seam binding. And then this right here is just um, fabric tape. I've never used this before. This is the first time I've used fabric tape, and it's super cool. I really like it, so I'll be using it some more. And I did another hitch poach on, hitch po <laughs> I can't say that right. Hitch post um, on that one as a closure. And then this is just a hair tie, elastic hair tie, but it matched the paper line. So these aren't done, but I wanted to kind of um, show you where the idea came from. Every year, my husband and I uh, make his mom a calendar because she's got a ton of kids, a ton of grandkids, a ton of great grandkids. So she can't keep everything, all the, all the dates straight. So we make our calendar and we put all of the important information on the calendar for her to remember and then um, add photos to it. So I take photos all year round. Um, and so we pick the photos we like out of all the family members and we put them on the uh, calendar, print it out for her. So everybody's always like, oh, I want to see, I want to see the pictures. and kind of hard for everybody to look at the one calendar. So what I did this time is I wanted to take all, this is all the pictures that were in her calendar, which is a lot. So um, I wanted to take a book. Well, I didn't have one to hold all of these, so I made one real quick. It's a little thick. I wouldn't recommend making them this thick because it's not real sturdy. The pictures want to kind of slip out a little bit, but um, this is where the idea came from. And this is that same technique that recycled um, you know, box and then cover it with paint and then cover it with the Tim Holtz tissue wrap. Uh, this is probably the first thing that I made with that, with that idea. So it's pretty cool. I like it. Um, but again, I think it's too thick. So, um, I, you know, changed the dimension of that to one inch spine so that it wouldn't be, you know, so heavy and so thick. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we need is to cut a piece of chipboard to size. And the size of this book is 
six and a half inches tall by four and a half inches wide. So let me get find a pencil here. And I'm gonna mark these. I'm gonna do a six and a half inch cut first out of my 12 by 12 chipboard. This is also a good project. If you had a bunch of like leftover pieces of chipboard, you could use it um, here because it doesn't take that many pieces. So you'll need three pieces all together. So the first cut is gonna be at six and a half. Ooh, look at that glare. I'm sorry about that glare. I was trying a new um, lighting situation and a new tripod, so we'll see if it works. And when you're cutting with um, a craft knife like this, it's always better to make several easy cuts instead of pushing down really hard and trying to cut. It doesn't cut very well that way. And it tends to dull your blade a little bit more too. All right, so now we got six and a half tall. So now I'm gonna cut two pieces at four and a half inches wide. And that's a little bit of a strange angle too because of the tripod. There's one. I got a new tripod that kind of lever or, or cantilevers over, or I don't know if I'm using the right word, but it's not just straight up and down. It has an arm that swings over, so the camera's hanging over my head a little bit, sort of. So that's kind of making it a little bit of a strange angle, but we'll see. Okay, two four and a half. And then we need a one inch spine. So I'm not gonna go to the edge here. You can make it whatever size you want it to be, um, whatever width, just as long as it's um, six and a half inches tall. And um, I just like the one inch size myself, but you can make yours whatever size you want. Okay, so now we got our three pieces. We got our front back, front and back cover, and then the spine. All right, so to cover these, I covered them all the way to the edge. You see that it's all the way to the edge and then I kind of rough the edge up with a uh, sanding block or a distressing tool. Um, I haven't decided which one I'm gonna use yet on this one. So what I like to do is pick out which papers I wanna use for my cover, my spine, and my inside. Okay, so I think I'm gonna use this as the cover or no, this is the spine, and this is the cover, and this is the lining on the inside. So we're gonna start with the, the front cover part. So I'll flip it over. And the way I do it is, you can use any type of glue that you like. I'm gonna be using um, Fabri-Tac from Beacon because it holds really fast and it's, I don't know, I just like it. Um, but you could use, you know, Tombow glue, you could use um, PVA glue, you can use any, you can even use dry tape adhesives. You don't have to use a liquid, but I like to use the liquid. It gives me a little bit of playtime to where I can move it around. So you want to cover the back with a pretty good amount of glue. And then I just kind of line it up with the corner of my paper and just kind of moosh it around. Moosh, is that a word? Moosh. Like that. And then we just kind of want to let that sit. We're going to rotate it. Look, see the glue gets everywhere, but that's okay. Rotate it around this way. And we're going to do the other cover.
if you were making more than one of these books at a time, um, there is enough room on one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock um, to where you can lay one this way and lay one that way so you can get four covers or if you want it, the, the lining of your cover to be the same as the outside you can just cut, you know, glue these down, cut them and then flip them over and glue one here, glue one here alrighty, then you want to take your craft knife and try not to move because it's probably not super, super dry try not to move it out of place just trim along the edge So there's one. There's two. And we're going to set this piece aside because I might be able to use this piece for the spine. I'm not exactly sure yet. All right, then we're going to go ahead and cover the inside. Oh, that's the back side of the, of the pink paper. It's cute. It's a little chaotic, but it's cute. I wish they would have um, the baby girl in a better spot and you could put that on the cover. So same thing, just want to cover the back side with a good amount of glue and then you just want to stick it on here and smoosh it around and get it lined up pretty good in the corner and rotate it. Do the same thing for this side. Now, this is a pretty easy project, so if you need a quick gift for somebody, um, this would be a good one to give, especially if it's got photos involved. And you, it doesn't have to be baby themed, I just happen to um, have those two paper stacks or collections that weren't quite big enough for like a baby book. So. This is what I came up with. Okay. All right, and then trim it out the exact same way. And if you wanted to do any of those um, closures, you would have done that before you put your lining on because you wanted to be able to hide that a little bit. So I'm not going to do a closure um, on this one. And it's really, I don't even know if it's really a necessary thing to have. It's just one of those added touches you can do or not do. All right, we're going to set this aside. So now both of our covers are covered. And you can do anything you want to get the edges uh, smooth. You can use a Tim Holtz sanding block or any sanding block. And you can go like this. Or you can use this Prima. Um, distressing tool. You can use this raspy part and go like this. Um, and it does a little bit. If you keep going, it gets even even more. Um, but I'm going to use this distressing notch. I think I've used it in another video before. But it really gets a good um, distress look. So I'm going to do that on all four sides, front and back, both covers. So either tool would be fine. So now all of those, and now you didn't even have to do one of the edges, but I did. All right, for the spine, to cover the spine piece, um, what we're going to do, let me find one here, is the spine piece comes up and over um, to kind of, because if not, there would be like this gap. You would see this gap up here. That's not very pretty. So the spine piece has got to be taller than the six and a half inch uh, covers. So we need two pieces. We need one for the inside and one for the outside. So I'm going to get my paper trimmer. And let's see if this one's big enough. I need an eight inch tall by three inch wide. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Maybe. Nope. 
three inches. Oh, wait a second. Might be. Maybe. Is that three? Is that three? Oh, it is three. Okay. So, eight inches tall. We need one eight inches tall by three inches wide. And then we'll need one that's six and a quarter by three inches. See, these aren't big enough. Shoot. Shooty doodle. I'm going to have to cut into one anyways. All right, so we're going to do three inches first. And then six and a quarter. You don't want it to be six and a half because then they'd all go to the very edge and it doesn't look very clean that way either. All right. So the next step is to, this is how I try to do it. I try to use my cutting mat. Um, I line it up to where the center of the piece of paper is, you know, on one of these inch lines. And then I can line up my, when I glue this down, I can line it up a little bit easier. And I know that it's three-fourths inch taller here, or longer here, and three-fourths inch longer here. So, it just helps me line it up just a little bit. It's not 100% necessary, I don't guess. You can eyeball it. So, I'm trying not to get my head in here. Oh, I think I did a pretty good job. so quiet in the house today. Today's the first day of school. Yay! I love, I love having my children around, but it's hard to make videos when your children are around all the time. Okay, um, I forgot to get my score tape out. I am using the score pal score tape or sequing or whatever you want to call it. A quarter of an inch. You don't have to use a quarter of an inch, but that's what I'm using. And I tape up all four sides. Of course, I didn't show you this. Like this one, I ripped, I ripped the um, the spine piece there, so I didn't tape it all the way to the edge. I just taped it towards. Um, probably just put tape on this piece, but it's really it's got a really pretty a ripped edge and so if you wanted to do that don't put it on the edge there then my son was actually excited about going back to school today so that made me happy He's going to the seventh grade my oldest is at school too but he's he's like in a college situation so it's quiet today I like it all right, so you put it on that piece, and then you put one piece. Um, if there's a pattern on here that you want it to be facing up, you need to make sure that you put it on the left-hand side um, of that piece because it's just going to help us stick it down. See, I didn't have to... Um, distress that edge there but I did no going back and now that I have acrylic nails on I can't get this tape off very well so I have to use my craft knife all right and then you take it off the two sides and then you take it off one of the covers and if it's a like I said if it has a pattern on it you need to make sure that whichever piece that you stick down on the right hand side is the back cover and then whatever piece you stick down on the left hand side is the front cover and you want to kind of line up you know the six and a half and then you want kind of like a quarter of an inch I wouldn't go bigger than a quarter of an inch but I wouldn't do an eighth of an inch either because you need that room for it to bend and okay well uh, the recording cut off there so I don't know where I was at but I'm just going to press this down after you place it down and flip it over. Take the 
tape off the other cover. And do the same thing, about a quarter of an inch. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's not a precise project. You just want to kind of make sure you're right in the range of being even at that top edge there. Alright, and the reason I put these pieces here is because when you fold this over, the middle part, if it didn't have a piece of tape on it, it's going to gap open. So that's not very pretty. So this I'm just going to stand it up on its end and fold it over. It kind of gives it a beginning crease when you do it like this. All right, now this piece that covers the center here, you can either um, you can either glue it down or you can tape it down. I think I'm going to tape it for speed's sake. Some of them, especially on the spine, because it wants to like buckle if you don't. You don't have to uh, overdo it. The the um, pages aren't that heavy even with the pictures in them um, because of the size the, the width that I've made it so it's really not that bad and then we want to cover all four edges of this liner piece go again with the craft knife to get the tape off. I'm also a nail tech, um, just in case you were wondering, and I wanted to have my nails back on. Uh, very exciting stuff, isn't it? Now you want to try to do your best here. I don't know if this has a direction or not. It's glue on my finger. To try to, whoops. To try to line it up. You're going to be about an eighth of an inch top and bottom. And if it's not lined up perfect, it's okay because we're going to put some, some stuff around it. Now you want to give it a good press or use your bone folder to really press in that um, score tape. It also helps get you started on your crease there. Don't press too hard or you'll rip it. Okay, and you just wanna gently work it closed. So that's pretty, isn't it? Okay. Alright, so now we're going to put the grommets here, grommets, ugh, eyelets, let me get them out, I forgot to get them out. Um, I think I'm going to go with this kind of um, dull silver color. And this, this couldn't be any easier to do. Um, there's, a, there's a big side and a small side. I'm going to use the big side. I think I'm going to go on the inside. And I'm just going to eyeball the middle. And I'm going to just let it go all the way in to the bottom. And just as long as you do both the same. I think it ends up being like a three quarters of an inch. You don't have to mark it. You don't have to do any of that. Oh, and this is a, a, a crop a dial by We Are Memory Keepers. Love that thing. Flip it over, put your eyelets in, and use the tip end up here. Squeeze. This is 
just a must-have tool. I just want everybody to know that. If I had to recommend um, a must-have tool, if you're going to do this type of work, it is to get something that can go through some chipboard. I love that tool. Alright, so now our eyelets are in there. And that's where the seam binding is going to get strung through. Okay, let's see about covering this edge here. I'm going to use some just store-bought regular uh, lace trim and I'm going to run a piece of tape here and I'm just going to, I think I'm going to wrap it all the way around though because I like the way that looks. Oops, better make sure that piece fits. Yeah. Okay, so let's start in the inside here. Ah. So I'm going to run another piece of score tape, quarter of an inch. I think this ribbon is probably three-eighths of an inch, so you can use one-eighth of an inch too if you wanted to. Either way. And I'm going to run it just right, I think I'm going to run it right um, a little bit on the, the spine piece, but mostly on the lining paper. And then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to line it or keep going the same. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, nothing in life is perfect. So just do the best you can. Well, it seems like it's a little awkward, and it is. It is. I'm going to lift this piece up just a little bit so I can tuck that down. And we're going to do that on both, both, both sides. You can always cut these pieces of tape too. You don't have to keep it continual, which makes it awkward. going to start in the back here and I'm gonna there's a straight edge on this ribbon and there is a um, pretty ruffled edge I'm gonna put the straight edge up next to the spine piece and I'm gonna start in the middle I think like so or close to the middle it's not quite the middle of it we're gonna flip it around same thing. If you need to do just a little bit at a time, that's cool. And then just finish it off. You don't want to pull too tight because you don't want to stretch it out of shape like I just did. Oh, I need some good scissors to cut that. it off. See, so doesn't that give it like a much cleaner, pretty, soft edge to it? I just think it's better. Alrighty, let's do the other side. This, these, this is not how this came. This were like little spools of this um, lace whale. Well, so I just kind of twisted it around one of these, um, these are Prima, the Prima lace, uh, the doilies and the flower. That's where that came from. Okay, let's pull the tape up. And we want to start somewhere in the middle. My version of the middle. Oops. Oops, it might just have to be a little crooked because I don't know if I can get that back up. Oh. There we go. So it can't be fixed. Alright, flip it around. Keep taking the tape off. Flip it around some more. There 
we go. Okay, so you can do as much as you want to the cover, or you can leave it simple like this. Um, either way, I don't know if that's focusing in very well, but either way, um, that's kind of the basics, I guess. All right, so let's get to the pages. Let me just clean some of this away. Okay, so the pages, so someone gave me um, a box of office supply pay, page protectors, or I guess that's what they're called, I don't know. Um, I don't know if they were if they were clearing out their office and didn't need them, I, mean, I don't know. But anyway, so I thought, I will use them, um, cut them down and use them for this type of photo album. So that's what I did, so I'm kind of recycling too. You can also, by the way, you can also use recycled cardboard, uh, cereal boxes, uh, whatever you have um, for these covers too. All right, so we're going to need uh, our trimmer, paper trimmer. It's a dangerous way to have my knife. And then we're going to need some plastic sleeves here. I put a piece of white paper in there just so you can see it, but it's just a clear um, plastic sleeve. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to trim it down to six and a quarter. So that it'll fit inside the the covers nicely, and the four by six photo will fit in there um, perfectly. So trim it down to six and a quarter. By the way, I have a ton of these. If anybody can think of something to do with this, it's open on both ends. Yeah, go ahead. Give me a shout. Let me know because I've got a bunch. Okay, and then you want to flip it over, and you want to try to take off. Sometimes they have that this this white pit bit on there. Sometimes they don't have anything. Sometimes, um, I guess it just really depends on the makers, but I try to get as close to that edge as I can to get off that, um, that piece. Because you don't need it. But sometimes it'll leave like a little white line, and that doesn't really bother me. I think it actually, you know, aids, it gives, oh shoot. What am I trying to say? The white line doesn't really bother me. I think it just adds to the character of the photo album. Um, so then, we don't need the paper trimmer anymore. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. Alright, so then you can use as many um, sheets as you'd like. Since they have that little bit of a white edge, I kind of like flip them back and forth just so they're not all the same. Alright, so what you want to do we will need our, well, you will need some sort of straight edge. I'm going to use my scoreboard, my Martha Stewart scoreboard. I'm going to stack all my pages together. I'm using six, I think. I'm going to stack them together. I'm going to put them up in that corner, and then I'm going to fold them over. Now, you're not going to get a crisp crease by far. You will not get one, no matter how hard you push. I've even tried scoring each one. Whoa, what a time eater. Oh, that was awful. And then, whoops, I just spilt my paper clips. And then you take two paper clips and put one on each side just to kind of hold them together. And then we're going to take the uh, crocodile again, except this time with the small home. And I have it set to uh, a, half, a half an inch, so um, if you're going to do a bunch of them, you know, go ahead and move this little lever thing up and it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry. Alright, so I've kind of keep them together, and in this crease, I'm going to punch a hole a half inch in. Oh, it's a little awkward. I have to hold my arms out away from me. Uh, this tripod's a little different. Alrighty, so there's the half an inch on each side. And then we don't need this anymore. We're going to take this away. Alright, so the easiest way I have found to um, get these sewn into the book is to, I've got two feet of whatever you want to use. If you want to use um, just regular string, if you want to use lace, if you want to use uh, yarn, if you want to use, um, oh, what else could you use? <laughs> just 
just about anything really I guess but I've got the seam binding that I've crinkled up two foot I've got it on a really dull needle because you don't need a sharp one for this you come in from the outside go down to the to the bottom hole and you don't need that needle anymore and then you can kind of play with it back and forth to get them kind of even like so and then do all of your these are like little signatures so do all of your signatures the same way so I already have um, two more prepared and I'm just gonna stack them on top of each other like that now make sure that if you have a directional paper that your stuff is going the right way and you make sure you got your bottoms on the bottom all right so I gather up all three edges it doesn't matter which order you take them in just to kind of um, give yourself a little point and then you carefully try to go through this eyelet uh. This is probably the most challenging part of the whole project. I could put it all back on a needle, but that takes a lot of time. You would think. All right, so you do that for both sides. Gather them up, twist them a little bit. Okay, now you want to make sure that they are good and tight up against that um, spine. Goodness gracious, I can't find words today. So you might want to go through and pull each one of these to make sure, and then kind of hold it tight. Once you got them tied up to that spine, hold it tight and do the same thing at the bottom. Make sure it's good and tight and then because of the eyelets you're not going to rip through anything you can just tie a bow you can tie a knot you can do however you want to i am a fan of this fluffy seam binding look so there it is that's it it's all finished all you gotta do is add your photos let me take these off. Add your photos in it, and voila, you have an instant gift. And yeah, I just said voila. Okay, so, see that was pretty easy. So all of these um, will be available on my Etsy shop. If you want to head over there and check it out, well, they may not be up just quite yet, but they will be at some point when I get them all finished. But um, also, you know, if, if anybody, I have some requests already, but if anybody would like to see me do something in particular, um, you know, just leave it in the comments below and I will see about getting that done for you. Um, thanks for watching and give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Be sure you subscribe um, and go head over and check out my Etsy shop. See you later. <laughs>